Welcome to this session on ethical influencing. Now, you might ask, why is ethical influencing important to you? Well, here's the thing. I know that when people become engaged in an organization, when people believe in its philosophy, when people create a vision that they are passionate about, when they discover products that they believe in and that can help others, then they want to bring people on the journey with them. And when those people don't come on the journey with them, it can become incredibly frustrating. If this is a familiar story to you, then this session is right for you. And I'd encourage you to apply the insights and to experiment with the tools I'm going to share. I'm going to share with you three ethical influencing tools that I know will help people to engage in your ideas and in the products that you believe in. So let me start with the first and out of all of the influencing tools that I know, it is my absolute favorite. Nobody quite knows why there is such power and magic in the number three but there undoubtedly is. Some people think it's because of the main areas of the brain. Others believe that its power comes from the Holy Trinity. Whatever the roots of it, what I know for sure is that when we want to ethically influence others, when we share information in groups of three, that information has a different impact and a stronger resonance. One of my old bosses was one of the most knowledgeable and inspiring people that I've ever met. He used to present to some of the most senior people in some of the biggest organizations that you can imagine. And those presentations would be well-practiced and beautifully polished, but he'd always finish in exactly the same way. He'd say something like, of course, despite all of this, there are only really three things that you need to know about this. And he would share his three insights powerfully and concisely while demarking them off on his fingers. And the audience would be enthralled. I've shared this with thousands of people all around the world since learning it from Patrick. And without exception, I get feedback saying that people feel like they become an expert in a topic in an organization, in a product, and they're able to influence others to see their point of view in a whole different way. So whether you completely believe it or not, when you are sharing information, when you're looking to gain buy-in, when you're looking to engage others, assume that there are only ever three things that they need to know about the product or the subject. And when you share those three things, share them concisely and precisely and demark them off on your fingers as you go. Experiment with this and notice the difference and the power of three. Next up is a well and long known influencing fact, which is that we are more likely to do something if other people are doing it first. We are more likely to buy a product if we feel like other people are buying it. And in particular, if we feel like other people who are like us are buying it. When I was young, there was a, an advertising campaign for a particular pet food. And it finished off with a strap line that went something like, eight out of 10 cat owners believe that their cats prefer it. Just think about that for a moment. If you were a cat owner and you watch an advert that says eight out of 10 cats preferred this food, why would you buy any other? Why would you buy some food that cats don't prefer if you love your animal? It sounds like a simple concept and an obvious concept, but it's powerful. Social proof works. If you watch hair care adverts, Quite often there'll be a little statistic at the bottom that says something like, 
75% of people who use this shampoo feel like their hair is cleaner as a result of it. Now, the logistical part of us should say, it's shampoo, of course our hair will feel cleaner using it. And if only 75% of people believe that this shampoo makes their hair cleaner, what about the other 25%? It should work for everyone. But you see, we have an unconscious response to social proof. If we believe that other people are going somewhere or buying something, the chance of, uh, chances of us doing the same increases dramatically. So, of course, don't make the statistics up. This is ethical influencing. But if you're looking to get people engaged in your vision or in an organization or in a product, find ways that you can show that other people are engaged or are buying it and your audience are significantly more likely to do the same. The third of my ethical influencing tools works on a fundamental principle that we tend to want things that we think we might not be able to have. Some people call this FOMO, the fear of missing out. Others know it as scarcity, but the principle is the same. We tend to want things that we think we can't have. When I'm working with large organizations and running training programs that lots of people will have to go to, one of the things that I always suggest to the organization that they do is to somehow show that places are limited. So if you have 20 places each month for the next six months, we don't say there's 120 places over six months, book on now. We say there are only 20 places available this month, book now. And we might do the same next month. But what I know is that when we demonstrate a degree of scarcity, then people want to book. People are more likely to secure a place than if we opened up all 120 places in one go. Online retailers often use a simple, similar principle. I've got a book on Amazon. And if I was to go on there now, I'm pretty sure that it would say that there are a limited number of copies in stock. And even though I know the influencing tool, and even though it's my book, there will still be an automatic response that makes me want to secure one of those copies quickly before they're gone. Now, I know that if there weren't any copies in stock, all it would mean is that I would have to wait an extra couple of days before I got one. But we have an automatic response to want to secure what we think we might miss out on. So I'd like you to think about how you can use this ethical influencing technique of scarcity or fear of missing out. How can you demonstrate to those that you're looking to influence that if they don't buy this particular product now, they may miss out? Or if they want to join you in creating your vision, that there may be a limited time or a limited availability. Now, I keep underlining, this has to be ethical. Don't make it up. Here in the UK, there are some furniture stores that are always on the last day of their sale. And frankly, people know that now, and the te technique becomes void. It loses its effectiveness. But there is a difference in saying to people that there is a limited number of these products over the next couple of weeks. So if you want one in the next couple of weeks, you need to secure it now versus saying we can get this for you at any time. We are more likely to want things that we feel like we can't get or we might miss out on. Use the principle of the limited edition well. So there you have my three favorite ethical influencing tools. Use the power of three. There are only ever three things you need to know about anything. Secondly, remember that people are more likely to do something or buy something if they feel that other people are doing the same. 
And third, we are more likely to want to do something or buy something if we feel like we could miss out on it, if that opportunity is limited. So think about how you can use these principles in your context and experiment with it. You won't get it right every time, but I do want you to notice the positive results that you get. And remember that we're using these in service of Atomy's mottos. We're using them to help us to cherish the spirit, to create the vision, to follow the faith, and to serve in humility.